welcome to Ready Set Demo from Elizabeth's Craft Room. I hope you are doing well. Um, we have been having a little bit of a trouble in the UK. We didn't have any product delivery for uh, weeks. Um, so it's a little bit sort of stressful. And uh, one of the things I did to entertain my lovely ladies and keep them sweet while they waited patiently um, for their goodies uh, was a craft along. In fact, I did two or three craft alongs and they were really popular. But the one I'm going to show you today was super popular. Um, they made so many different versions of this and I'll show you a couple of them now while I talk. But they were so lovely. Um, all the different kind of versions of doing this. Now, what you can do is you can make them as a photo frame so they, they hang basically so I, it's difficult to show on the screen <laughs> because they're quite long but they hang so you can make them as a photo frame with three little photos in as I'm showing here or you can make them as a home decor piece hang in there very appropriate as at the time of filming we're still in full lockdown in the UK these are easy to do with minimal supplies. Your customers are going to need square dies of some description or a, a, at worst you could do it with a craft knife. But I will show you how to make these super simple, fun to craft along with and then for them to finish off and decorate afterwards um, and share with one another. And it was, as I say, it was really popular um, with my ladies and I did it with my team as well. So um, let me show you how to make this project. Now, the best thing about this project is you can use up any scraps of designer series paper that you have. Um, this was uh, made with one of the celebration papers, but you can make it with absolutely anything um, in terms of DSP and anything in terms of decoration. So I've done a version of the printable for you with all the measurements on. Um, if you're on my Ready, Set, Demo newsletter list, you will already have received that. Check in your spam box if, it, if it's not in your inbox at the moment. Um, but if you're not on my newsletter, why not? Um, you can join my Ready, Set, Demo newsletter. All you need to do is email me at liz.shannon at icloud.com. If you mention frames, I will send you out my most recent newsletter and that has got a link to that um, non-logo printable. I do a non-logo one for my demo friends and that means you can put your own logo on it if you like. Right, let us get started with what you are going to need. So you need three pieces of designer paper of your choice. Um, so I've got some black and white ones. I'm going for a sophisticated look. This is actually casing one of my lovely ladies who did a black and white one and I loved it. So, so I've got some black and white DSP, but again, anything you like, five by five inches by five inches. Then you want three pieces of Whisper White cardstock and these are four inches by four inches. You want three pieces of the backing. So this is the 12 by 12 backing that comes with the designer paper. So you want three pieces like these. Now these need to be just a smidge under um, the four inch, four by four. So three by 15 sixteenths, um, just a smidge underneath. Um, and then you're gonna need whatever you're going to use to decorate it. And you're also going to need a meter of ribbon of your choice. Um, or, and I picked out, oh, I picked out this one because um, I'm doing black and white this time, or twine. And it's either a meter or 40 inches roughly of ribbon or twine, depending on how long, how separated out you want the pictures to be. Right, and the only other thing that you're going to need, as I said, is you are going to need your embossing machine um, and you're going to need the dies which are the stitched shaped squares and I'm using the larger one or another square die that is roughly about two and three quarter inches. Now first thing we're going to do and I'm going to get my flattest plate here flattest plate because it makes it easier and I'm going to lay this down now I want the DSP to be facing in the direction that I want to see so I want to see the flower one 
so I'm going to go that in that direction. You can measure, but I am eyeballing this, and I have an all of mine, and uh, so far so good. But <laughs> watch me mess it up now. Okay, so you're going to do cut through, do one of these. You're going to save that piece of whisper white that comes out of the middle. And we're going to go ahead and do that three times. Now, when I did this um, with my team and my ladies, because they were crafting along with me, um, what I did was to then show them how to make that square, make that square up, which we'll do in a moment. And then I did another one and then I did another one so that they could spend the time um, making theirs up while I made my others, or those that needed a second look could have a second look. But for the purposes of this video, I will just go ahead and do all three. So again, DSP that I want to see faced upwards. So I'm gonna have one of my different on this. And this designer paper is from the, um, it's from the mini. It's, I think it's the one with the um, Valentine stuff. I forget the name of it right at the moment. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is to adhere our squares, um, our apertures onto the back. So I'm gonna put glue around those and I'm going to stick those on the back making sure those bits are lined up. Tombow is good here because it does give you some wiggle room if you're not quite right the first time. So glue on the back here. Ah, did you notice my deliberate mistake? <laughs> I flipped that. So we're gonna have two stripey and one flowery now. So you're going, this is going on the back, so whatever is the side you don't want to look at is the side you're sticking this to. There we go. So I'm going to have one flowery now and two stripy. That's okay. Right, next you're going to need your paper snips and you're going to snip across the corners. Now you want to be close to the corner, but you don't want to touch the corner because you don't want to see the white coming through. On some DSP this will show more than others. Um, okay, what I recommend now is using a bone folder and just going around the edge and giving that a little bit of pressure so that when you fold these pieces in they fold nice and crisply, makes it easier. And then we're going to put some adhesive on the back here. You could use tear and tape if you want to, um, but I'm just using a little bit of uh, Tombow again. And give those a press down. see how easy it is for your frame to come together. Right, I'm going to go ahead and do the others now. And there we go, there's my three basic frames. Now the next thing we want to do is to create an aperture so that we can put our decor in, whatever that is going to be. And this is where these pieces of backing come in. Um, it doesn't matter whether you have the shiny side sticking on or the other side, it doesn't really matter. Um, I am going to definitely suggest uh, tear and tape for this. You're going to put your tear and tape on three sides of each of the backing pieces and then you can slide your photo or other piece of decor in from the top. If you're never going to change the decor that is in the frames, um, you could just stick the piece 
direct onto here and then stick the whole thing onto the back of the frame. But by doing it on three sides, it gives you the opportunity uh, to change out your photos or your um, message if you've got a um, if you've got a saying of the month or something like that that you want to put on. And then what we're going to do is to attach these. And this is just a tad smaller. And there we go, that's that piece. Now, if like me, you've got two patterns the same and you want to make sure <laughs> they are the same way up, just watch that when you're sticking. Let me go ahead and do the other two squares. There we go. So there's our three, um, our three frames, and this is how this is going to, uh, going to look. Um, for the decor, you can do whatever you like. So here I um, cut pieces out of some celebr uh, some celebration paper. So I actually just fussy cut some flowers out, and I die cut some words, popped them up using the dimensional sheets. Um, I think they're called foam sheets. Um, in the catalogue on the di on the um, the page next to the dimensionals there. The other thing I did, if you have a close look, is I put some embossing folders. I used some embossing folders for the panels. So your panels that you're going to slot in, or your photos, if you're going to slot um, some Disney photos in there, like I did, um, the, the photos or the panels need to be three inches by three inches. And they should slot in just fine if you're using the um, the Stampin' Up tear and tape, which is a quarter of an inch. If you're using a wider tear and tape, why would you? <laughs> but you may find you need a smaller um, a smaller element. So I have done some just to show you something a little bit different. So I've cut um, one piece in foil for a back. Oh, that's going to be the middle one. Concentrate, Liz. Okay, so I've got a backing piece there. And so that will, I can just, there we go. Let's wiggle that into place. So I've got a little piece of foil on that one. And then I took, I decided to use um, some of the uh, Beautiful World goodies. So some dies, I used the Old World paper embossing folder. Um, and I used the You Make the World a Better Place stamps uh, to make my layers. So I've used the Old World embossing folders for my first layer. So let's wiggle those in as well. Now, if you are just using photos, you can slide these in and out. If, like me, you're doing a decor piece and you want to pop these up, you might want to slide the backings in and then pop up those decor pieces afterwards. And if you're doing a changeover, you may want to pull them to, to pull the um, the uh, dimensionals off if you if you want to if you need to to take them out. You may get them out um, without damaging it. So the greeting I picked is, you make the world a better place. Um, and this was, as I say, from The Beautiful World. I punched that out using the Heart Duo um, punch. So onto Whisper White, no, Basic White now, and um, to Basic Black. Okay, and I'll get some dimensionals. I do want to pop these pieces up. But how you decorate these is entirely up to you. Um, I think if you are apart from your family at the moment, it is nice to send a picture. I encouraged my lovely ladies, who are a lot of them away from their children and grandchildren, to send pictures of them doing the things they do in lockdown, including stamping with me. <laughs> Whatever else they're doing, they're baking or they're gardening or whatever else they're doing um, for their grandchildren to see them. Right, just making sure that I'm putting these the, them the right way up. There we go. So I'm going to form my hanging piece like so. 
So let's flip those over so I know I've got them all the right way up. Um, and this is where these cut off pieces are going to come into their own. So we're going to take the piece of ribbon and I want that to come down um, and you can adjust. I mean, if you wanted it to, to hang a lot longer, you could. If you wanted um, uh, other kind of tassels or something on the end, of course, you can do that too. So I'm just going to vaguely position that. And what I'll do is just put some, uh, just put some stamp and seal on the back, just to kind of hold those in place. Um, the thing that will actually hold this on nicely is going to be these backing pieces because I'm going to glue those over the top. And you can use your grid paper to measure your distances between, again you can measure how central they are. Mine is not totally central but it's kind of okay. Take your time with this bit if you're... Um, you want to make sure everything hangs exactly straight. Stay still, there we go. That looks good. And then the final one. Make sure you put your adhesive in the middle and not near the edges because your little squares are only going to cover a two and three quarter inch gap in the middle. So I'm leaving these with about three squares on my on my inch side grid. There we go. And as I said, to really hold this in place, we're going to um, use some squares. You can use these with glue. You can put some tear and tape over the top of those if you want to be um, have a belt and braces going on. But um, hopefully once that's in place, oh, she says wiggling it, that will stop the ribbon from moving around. And I'm just sort of centering those on the back there. This is why I say you don't want your uh, tear and tape, uh, uh, sorry, your um, stamp and seal adhesive to be any further out than that middle square. You don't want glue on the back there. We glue what we don't where we don't want it. So it makes a nice neat finish on that. Let's grab my ribbon scissors and I'm going to do a little neatening up on those tails. Do one longer than the other. And there you go. So I can't put it in the camera the right way around, but you get the idea that that will hang. And um, I will show you a closer um, picture of it as well um, on my on my blog post and on my newsletter. So I do hope you like this project. As I said, it was incredibly popular with my lovely ladies um, and I think the team liked it as well. So enjoy that project. If you would like those printables with all the measurements on ready to hand out to your, um, your customers or email out to your customers um, so they can be ready to craft along with you if they want to, um, just uh, look on your newsletter or get in touch with me, liz.shannon at icloud.com and say frame and I will pop you on my newsletter list and send out these instructions. I hope you enjoyed that, that project. See you soon, my demo friends. Bye. Love.